Borderlands 3! It is time for our video game news. In this segment, we share the best headlines from the weekend in the gaming industry. Industry. And industry. Austin, what is industry. the biggest piece of news we have this week? Say it out loud. It is the inner gamer. Oh, that was not what I was hoping for. Oh, sorry. I was oh, hoping oh, for oh, you meant Borderlands, Borderlands 3! It's here! Oh my god. It's been gosh. revealed, everybody. They had at PAX East, as we talked about, that is why we had a discussion topic. That is what's next for the future of Borderlands. We mentioned that Borderlands 3 was going to get revealed. We thought it was going to be earlier, but now it's here. It's revealed. It's announced. More details are coming out the day after you listen to this podcast. We're going to talk about what has been revealed because get it you was... Get up to date for today's drop. It was a lot in the last five minutes of this hour-long stream where Randy Pitchford kind of made a fool of himself a little bit. It. And then also kind of was funny. And then also there was a lot of technical difficulties from PAX and I watched the we'll whole entire damn thing and it was but Let's crazy. talk about this this thing. You want to talk about Borderlands 3 first? Yeah. Um, it was okay. amazing. Let's talk about Borderlands 3. What a so, great yeah. trailer. What a great trailer. So I, I like just real fast, like that teaser trailer, I knew there'd be a lot of Easter eggs in that teaser trailer, but I didn't realize how many were in there. Like they have freaking like shift codes in there that are, give you like free shit for Borderlands 2. There was, uh, Wait, <laughs> yeah, no, like, oh, so you had to watch the stream to know oh, okay. about all the stuff. But yeah. Stream. So if you go through and watch a the trailer, there's like uh, codes, like as they were painting around this mask or whatever, there was a code in there that actually gives you free items inside Borderlands 2. So you input that code and it's going to give you free shit. And then um, there was hints at like different things such as character reveals and uh, moments that come are coming back, who's going to be in it. Because what people didn't know is that it never was officially confirmed or not of whether or not Tales of the Borderlands would be canon in the actual Borderlands story. Well, now from that teaser trailer, now the official trailer, it's been confirmed that it is canon as part of that world. So Reese is back. He's like got like facial hair now, which is awesome. So I know you haven't played that yet. Yeah, but I'll say I don't know some but, of these characters. But you need to go back and play that, man, because oh, it's gosh. like it literally is as far as story but I goes. Can't. Telltale's gone. It's over. You can still get it. No, it's over. I can't buy them anymore. I'm t- I'm t- trust me, you will right. thank me later. All right. Like the story bits in this are so freaking good that tie into the overall world. Like it is so worth every minute of playing that. Um, and then a lot of the characters in that are actually coming into this. So like, that's even more reason why you want to get it. And I want to talk about like the, the level. So this is a game that's not going to be taking place. Like the previous two games have taken place on one location, right? But in this one, they pitched heavily that it's on multiple planets. So you're probably going to be a vault hunter that's hunting for the entrance to vaults on like multiple places. And they're very different. There's like a cyberpunk looking world. There's a freaking chick that like spreads her arms out and has like multiple arms that are all like electric and sh- like shiny kind and stuff. Kind of like Zenyatta in Overwatch. Yeah, like Zenyatta. There's a part that looks like it's from like China or something like that. Like there's just a lot of different variety. It looks like they're like vehicles might be a bigger part of it now, which is kind of exciting too. Like you can actually ride around your vehicles and like a billion guns, like holy shit, a billion guns, yo. I mean, I I hope it's like Destiny, where like there's a hub world where you go to or a hub base, or yeah, like maybe something in space, like a spaceship or something. And then you go to these worlds and you know conquer these worlds one by one, and maybe each of them have like a raid in them. But so, <laughs> w- will you be disappointed if it doesn't have the hub world and it's like basically just a larger greater story based rpg like borderlands 2 but no, bigger no okay i mean i love the last two yeah and they can just bring back more are we going to go into the polygon story um yeah, i mean we right can now. go into a little bit if you want okay. to well polygon said that it just looks like more of the same and they weren't excited for this trailer well it's not just, was, you know it was it was even more than polygon too it was polygon yeah, game spot there was like several places that were underwhelmed by this trailer right. they're like oh it just looks more of the same so it's like no, we, we aren't excited about this. And I'm like, in a time now when games as a service is a huge thing, these websites don't, they, they, they give a pass to all these other games that come out all the time. And it's just more of the same. Like yeah. Call of Duty or FIFA or whatever, you know, a sports game. It's just taking what they did before, adding a few characters into it. And then like, it's basically the same game with some new 
you know, shiner bells and whistles. And here we are getting a good quality game from a quality studio, making quality work, giving us more of what we want. And that's a negative thing. I just don't understand that. I don't, I don't either. Cause for me, it's a breath of fresh air. Even if this is more of that, like I just want more of this world and more of this story yeah. that in, intrigues me. Now, granted tales of the borderland or not tales of borderlands, the borderlands, a pre-sequel was a little bit underwhelming. Like we didn't, we never finished it. We played it, but didn't get quite get into it as much. But I think with this one, like it looks like it's going back to what borderlands two was and it's getting that feel in there. And I love that they're bringing these other characters in there and there's just a huge amount of diversity and just personality that like shines through this so much. And I, I cannot wait to interact with these NPCs and find out like what stories they, they have to send you on. And there's all these little like hidden hints of like, <clears throat> you know, crazy rebel people and stuff like that. Like, like messages on the walls, like this show in the vault thing is like, all over the place and then you're going to places that look like some sci-fi like foreign you know cyberpunk land and then there's this like wasteland like new orleans style looking area and then you got the desert areas and then there's all these different things there's a place that's like called the holy broadcast center like what the heck is that about like apocalypse or answer cal apocalypse and stuff like that there's all these little little things in here, but I'm, I'm curious to know, like there's a whole new central idea that they've introduced here with this children of the vault. And like, there's, it sounds like it's gonna be fucked up because handsome Jack's not around anymore. Yes. And he was kind of like the driving force of the bad guy. And now there's new bad people. So we have a whole new lineup of things to discover and be exposed to that. We've never seen before. And I'm really, really excited about what that means. And just looking at the, the environments, like, that's got me jazzed. And then guns with legs has got me freaking jazzed. Like what the fuck? And then there's a part where there's a freaking like T-Rex dinosaur thing. That's coming after you trying to kill you. Like, what is that? I mean, it's awesome. There's so much stuff in here. So I, I don't know. I don't see why anybody would not be excited about just the character design that's in here. And then bricks comes out the freaking sax solo. It would be kind of nice. I mean, I think there still would be some interesting stuff if they did do a Destiny like kind of situation with this and made it little games as a servicey, but I'm kind of glad they're not just because I don't know if, I mean, it could definitely find a foothold for sure, but then it's trying to pull people's attention away from these other games. Right. Um, right. Which in this case, it's kind of is now existing in its own realm because of the fact that it is, um, you know, it's, there isn't anything like it anymore, which is kind of sad to think about, but there isn't like a ground other than like the, the outer world's going to be interesting. If they come out at the same time, you know, that's going to be kind of sucky for the outer worlds. Cause yeah. this yeah. definitely has more personality than the outer worlds, even though I'm excited about the outer worlds, but I, I um, think, I think, I think they're their different their, enough. Their own niche. Yeah. Even though they are similarly. Yeah. Cause this like, is more about like zany, crazy, like shoot them up, blow them up, like gun, gun zone place is really exciting. I'm glad that on April 3rd, we're going to get Borderlands 1 and 2 remastered. If you have it on PC, like you get it for free. So oh, nice. I get, that's a free upgrade that comes out. So you get all that. Thank you, PC. Yeah. <laughs> Borderlands 2, you can play in VR, which is pretty exciting. Um, that's wild. So there's a, there's a lot of good happening here. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, so in, in that, in addition to this, they announced a tabletop game. Um, it was funny that whenever Randy Pitchford came out, he was like talking about Borderlands and stuff like that and saying like, you know, we got a big announcement at the end of this. I think you all know what it is. Um, no, it's not Battle Royale. I'm just going to put that out there. So he like, sh you know, shuttered it real fast. and was like, there's enough of that. We ain't going to do that. That's not our thing. So yeah, yeah. we'll leave it to those other people. Right. I was like, okay, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so what are you saying about everything coming out? Yeah. So they had some other things that they announced, like obviously game of the year stuff for all the Borderlands things. They have a tabletop game. Um, Gearbox also has a Gearbox publishing platform where they're going to, they had a trailer for Risk of Rain 2, which is out in Steam Early Access. And since it came out, it's like gotten a really, really good reviews since yesterday, like overwhelmingly positive. Like a, people are love, loving it. It's some kind of roguelike light game and 
It's supposed to be pretty good. Uh, Rick and Morty co-creators uh, Justin Roiland has a new game called Trevor Saves the Universe. That was that was re- announced, and then uh, the announcement of Bulletstorm coming to the Nintendo Switch. So a couple other little things in there, but overall, um, the stream was kind of rough, but the freaking trailer is awesome, and I cannot wait. So 